as Trump has been indicted again and again and again and again, Biden has chosen against taking him on in any meaningful way right now. That choice and the choice of top Republicans to stay silent has left a massive moral vacuum in our fraying democracy. Who is defending the guardrails? Uh, well, Chunk, Chunk and the uh, doddering, dim-witted President of the United States are uh, guarding the guardrails of our moral compass. We can thank uh, Vladimir Lenin for that. We uh, we applaud Chunk. All right, Chunk, he's our moral compass has been stolen. That was Chunk. He's a uh, former Democrat Party. Senate campaign staffer, his wife is a Bernie Sanders millionaire, millionaire S. He is married. It's a woman, right, Michael, that a Chunk is married to? I think that's right. And she has a radical left-wing extremist, anti-American, anti-capitalist political consulting firm in Virginia, which has raked in millions from the Bernie Sanders campaigns alone. And uh, when Chunk interviews Bernie Sanders, he never reveals that to their distrusting and dwindling number of uh, viewers. Um, well, happy Monday to you and welcome. I hope you all had a swell weekend. I I did my best girl and I, we had all kinds of fun. And we, um, starting Friday, actually, uh, Friday evening, we went out to dinner with uh, Larry O'Connor and his bride, Meredith, then had a swell uh, dinner with them. And we what else do we do, uh, Michael? We did all kinds of stuff this weekend, my best girl and I, and and uh, did some working and some of this and some of that. Went uh, kayaking yesterday. Uh, Saturday, we hiked the mall and uh, went down to... We didn't actually go into any of the museums because we got there late enough where it was like, oh, it's last call for this museum. And we're like, that's okay, we're just walking. We went and down, did about four miles, uh, four and a half miles hiking around down the monuments and... Uh, you know, your Lincoln Memorial, that's, you know, that one. And, and uh, then the big pointy one, what's that one, Michael? That's the Washington Monument. And we <laughs> and uh, strolled around uh, down in our mall and the, and the mighty Potomac River. And we had all kinds of good stuff. And then yesterday, kayaking. Kayak, that's a kind of a canoe. It's a sort of a boat for Democrats listening along. And uh, on the mighty Potomac River, uh, kayaking on the mighty Potomac. And that was, uh, that was a good... That was a good thing. Now, I uh, yesterday we, when we went went to uh, rent the kayaks, you can't just walk up and rent a kayak, you know, with a couple of bucks anymore. Now you've got to give the you know the government a complete record of where you were and what you're doing and for how long and how much you paid and who you were with and all that stuff. So you have to what do you they got a QR code. You have to walk up, use your phone, uh, zap the QR code, and then they give you these wristbands, you know, like you get when you go to a concert or the emergency room, right? And they give you the these, uh, see, uh, Jasmine, I got this, I got this green wristband, and uh, that's not because I was in the ER, it's because I rented a, 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 a kayak, and now they give you one of these things. And then my best girl and I, we went out to an outdoor place um, last night and around sunset, and we ran into a couple of our neighbors there, uh, three of our, well, two of our neighbors and their daughter, and uh, ran, into, uh, ran into them. And, uh, and they're friends, and, uh, and the, uh, the man, he said, oh, you okay? What happened? And I said, well, I rented a, a kayak. And uh, I said, because it looks like you were taken away by an ambulance or something. You got these wristbands. Uh, but you got the QR code, and so now Mr. Charlie, you know Mr. Charlie. Now Mr. Charlie knows where you were, when you were there, what you did, because you got to have a, can't just walk up and give him 20 bucks and get a kayak and paddle away for an hour or two. No, 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 you got to have, uh, the whole thing has to be documented. It's it's like the digital dollar, you know, it's the, the surveillance society in the name of convenience. It's, oh, it's very convenient. And then I used Apple Pay. Eh, eh. Um, but never mind that. We had, a, uh, we had a wonderful time. We were out and about a lot doing all kinds of good stuff and having a swell time. Having a swell, and I hope that you did too. I hope that you did too. Uh, and uh, this week, you know, lest uh, I forget, uh, this week is uh, our wedding anniversary. It's the anniversary of our wedding, so that's uh, kind of uh, that's kind of exciting too. Got that going on. Got a lot of stuff going on this week. Lots and lots of things. But in the meantime, boy, a whole lot uh, happened over the weekend in terms of news and craziness, right? Because Joe Biden is the president of the United States, and he is uh, what's the technical medical term, Michael? Um, brain dead. I think he's uh, brain dead. He should be in an iron lung. 
Uh, and uh, he is uh, now staying. You, you know where he's staying, Michael? He's staying at the $18 million Lake Tahoe, Nevada home of radical extremist, left wing, pseudo environmentalist, billionaire Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer. What kind of jet does the environmentalist uh, Tom Steyer fly around in because he's a multi billionaire? And one of his many homes is in uh, Lake Tahoe on the Nevada side which is where the Corleone family used to uh, uh, vacation, and they had all kinds of big parties and events at the uh, Lake Tahoe home and the Nevada side, naturally not on the California side. And Tom Steyer, a radical left-wing extremist that he is, see, I use that rhetoric, I was reading the Washington Post today, turns out every Republican is a radical extremist, MAGA Republican, and a danger to democracy itself. And, and who said that? We had another lefty say that, uh, that the Republicans that, oh, yeah, it was on uh, one of those Sunday morning talk shows. Was it Chunk? Um, it's, they're all a blur because they're all exactly the same thing. Or was it CNN? Because they're all hosted by Democrat Party political apparatchiks posing as journalists. I'm making quotation marks with my fingers, which is, of course, a part of the merger of state and corporate power. And the merger of state and corporate power is precisely... Uh, the way that Benito Mussolini defined fascism. And he knew a thing or two about fascism. But the uh, the brain-addled president of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden, that's only one of his pseudonyms. What are his other pseudonyms, Michael? They're too numerous to mention here. I have only a three-hour show. But uh, with Tom Steyer, this guy Tom Steyer, at his $18 million house, and then the White House and the news media lied that he's paying fair market value for Tom Steyer's radical billionaire home uh, in Lake Tahoe, and it paid fair market value. What is a fair market value for an $18 million home when you're renting it for a week? Because I know people that go, like let's say you go to the Outer Banks, right, and you rent a house uh, for your family with like 16 people staying there, eight bedrooms or something like that, and it's a $2.5 million house. And people pay $15,000 for the week, right? For, a, you know, say a $2 million house. So this would be nine times 15000 because it's an $18 million house. So is Joe Biden really paying fair market value for the rental of an $18 million house? Or are they lying again? I'm going to guess it's B because you know how much they lie, don't you? They, they lie all the time. And Tom Steyer, you know, he doesn't want to charge him. So they have this phony baloney. Oh, we got to pay something so it doesn't look like we're, you know, uh, getting free stuff when, of course, we are. Uh, either that or maybe Hunter paid for it with his ill-gotten gains from which country? From Ukraine? Uh, from Romania? From uh, where's uh, which one? From Russia? Moscow? From China? How many others? Uh, speaking of which, the dollar figure Uh, is now way up when it comes to how much money the Biden family has taken in. Now they're saying, according to documents obtained by Republicans, uh, Democrats would, you know, burn your house down if you had documents that proved nothing. Because they love burning stuff down, don't they? Usually police stations and courts and police cars and and, uh, businesses they've just looted and things like that. The Democrats loot a lot. You know, they're, they got, we should write a song about them, uh, loot a lot, you know, uh, uh, the Democrats that loot a lot. But now it's $53 million, the latest number from Congress that the Biden family has raked in, uh, doing nothing for anyone because they don't, they don't build buildings, they don't build pipelines, they, uh, but $53 million. Speaking of not building things, it turns off the Biden administration has been quietly selling off the sections of border fence, uh, doubtless at a low, low discounted rate, probably to their corrupt friends because they have a great many corrupt friends, should probably be some some, uh, charges filed under the RICO statutes, don't you think, with the Biden family and their pals. And let's take a look at that more than $1 trillion for the Inflation Reduction Act that they've all admitted was not about reducing inflation, but never mind that. Uh, where did all that money go and how many of those dollars went to Joe Biden's best friends and to the Democrat Party's donors and environmental radicals and extremists that would blow up your pipeline? Uh, but never mind that. So $53 million now. Yeah, he's also known as Robin Ware, Joe Biden, as his pseudonyms. 
uh, J.R.B. Ware, Joseph Robinette Biden Ware, and uh, Robert L. Peters, Robert L. Peters, and of course, Pedo Pete, Pedo Pete, like pedophile Pete, used to shower with his daughter when even she said in her diary it was inappropriate to do so. So we've got a bit of this and a bit of that going on with the Bidens. And in fact, there's a lot of stuff. It's not just a bit of this and a bit of that, but it uh, turns out the New York Times has a funny, baloney story. They're fluffers for the Democrat Party, and they're part of the merger of state and corporate power at the New York Times. See Benito Mussolini. And uh, inside the collapse of Hunter Biden's plea deal is the headline from them. And then it turns out uh, CNN following the, uh, it's, you know, the press isn't a pack, it's a centipede. And an admiral friend of mine at the Pentagon used to say, uh, somebody would make reference to pack journalism. And he would say, the Pentagon is not a pack, it's a centipede. And the head of the centipede is the New York Times. And all the other little legs follow in lockstep. Uh, like the fascistas that, there are, that they are with the melding, the merger of state and corporate power. But uh, the New York Times, the uh, prosecutor, you know, and we got more on this guy too. It turns out the uh, prosecutor, David Weiss, uh, who gave Hunter Biden that sweetheart deal, and then the deal fell apart because it was exposed how corrupt the whole deal was, and he was shamed into publicly coming. Well, we'll give you a misdemeanor, uh, misdemeanor counts on the tax things, and then we'll give you a little uh, kid gloves treatment on the gun charges, and we'll make sure that there's really no punishment for you. You pay a fine using somebody else's money that you didn't earn legitimately, and uh, then everything will be fine. The guns, psh, psh, come on, we'll just be quiet about that. And the tax charges, well, it turns out David Wise dropped the tax charges last Thursday very quietly. They were misdemeanor charges anyway. Now they've been dropped entirely, but with an assurance that he may file them not an assurance, a suggestion that he might, may file them again somewhere else, like California, because that makes a lot of sense, right? Maybe Washington, D.C., which won't happen, and you'll get a jury that will find him not guilty of everything, and then they'll burn police cars on the way out the door because, you know, they're Democrats, and when you get a D.C. jury, the criminal wins and the victim loses. But the story, prosecutor insisted on harsher Hunter Biden plea deal around time IRS whistleblowers came forward. And this is the New York Times saying, gosh, this is kind of conspicuous. This is curious. This is uh, even suspicious that David Weiss had this sweetheart deal. Then the whistleblowers came forward from the IRS investigators and they blew the whistle. And then the prosecutor came back and said, shh, we're going to give you a couple of misdemeanor tax charges and a phony, you know, baloney deal on the on the gun charge. But don't tell anybody. We'll just keep it real quiet. Then the deal blew up, right? The deal blew up. And now uh, somebody fake um, at the New York Times is pretending to do journalism for a minute. But they're about a year and a half behind. And it's spin on behalf of the Biden family because the New York Times is just another corrupt front group for the Democrat Party, part of the merger of state and corporate power. CNN followed the New York Times as a pair of legs following the head of the centipede at the New York Times and amazing stuff. And then we learned before investigating Hunter Biden, the prosecutor, David Weiss again, <coughs> worked with Brother Bo. Hey, wait a minute, because Brother Bo was the attorney general of the state of Delaware. And it turns out that the guy that was chosen to investigate the Biden family his ties to the Biden family run so deep. How deep do they run, Michael? They run so deep that he used to hang with and be pals with and work with Bo Biden, who was the good one, of course, and uh, who tragically died of uh, brain cancer, which Joe Biden falsely blames on uh, his serving as a lawyer in Iraq for a while, but never mind that. And uh, boy, and then, but wait, there's more, because I want to get to those stories. But Hunter Biden was involved, Hunter Biden was involved in the Trump impeachment over Ukraine. Well, how deep do his ties run to Ukraine? And wait, it was, it was President Trump that called Ukraine to ask about Biden family involvement in Ukraine, and that was an impeachable offense. But the Biden family's involvement in Ukraine is not an impeachable offense. Just asking about it is an impeachable offense. Isn't that amazing? We live in a very corrupt country. Washington, D.C. is very corrupt. The most corrupt institution of all 
is not the Justice Department or the FBI, although they're trying. The intelligence community, they aspire as well. But it's the American news media, make no mistake. Yeah, and Joe Biden auctioning off the border wall pieces because he's an open border guy. And he says he's doing it so that the Republicans can never begin construction on the border wall again. We don't trust the Department of Justice. We don't trust the investigation into Hunter Biden, according to polls. Uh, and um, we've got uh, all kinds of uh, good stuff. The uh, Democrats, so we got the, the first lady yesterday talking about banning books. She's pushing gay child porn on grammar schools again, the first lady is. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, Austin, Texas has been taken over by leftists, and now crime is skyrocketing and the police can't help you. Call 911, get put on hold. Uh, the police may show up hours later. Uh, what, what are more important, salmon eggs or people with their houses on fire? That's coming up as well. And we are at 888-630-9625. Hey, it's Chris Plant. Excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Book by this July 31st for extra savings. Visit chrisplantcruise.com. In Minnesota, they have a Democrat governor there, Tim Walz. He's a radical. He's an extremist. He's destroyed our democracy. And uh, not really, but this is the standard rhetoric that we uh, get from the Democrats. There's a funny piece in the Washington Post today about uh, the divisions in our country that uh, we ought to be dealing with. And it turns out it's all the fault of MAGA Republicans. It's right there in the Washington Post. They have fact checkers and stuff, so... It must be true. And the Democrats rioting, looting, plundering, shooting everybody, looting every place that uh, not just for the riots of which there were hundreds and hundreds across the country with dozens killed, thousands of police injured, billions in damage. But it turns out it's all the Republicans' fault. You know why, Michael? January 6th. That's why. (laughs) And that means Trump. So it's uh, Trump. It's all Trump's fault. And uh, they can loot all they want, reparations. So we got that. We got that, too. Uh, Pretty amazing. And Vivek Ramaswamy has uh, put out uh, 10 uh, top talking points. Did that over the weekend. And then he insulted. uh, He's he's not as uh, smooth and polished as an age-old politician. But we'll get to that. Right now, let's go to the uh, telephones, Michael. We are at 888-630-9625. Uh-oh, I'm running out the clock, aren't I? Uh, Let's go to Jeff calling from Hagerstown, Maryland. Jeffrey, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris, uh, did you have to give up your uh, party affiliation when you uh, rented the kayak? (laughs) They didn't ask me about that, but my best girl really did the paperwork, so I'm not sure. Uh, All right, very good. So uh, a pseudonym for Joe Biden would have been uh, Richard Cranium on some of those emails. I think that fits fits his... uh, pretty good. Richard Cranium is your suggestion. Let me see if I can decode that, if I can decipher that. Richard Cranium. Hmm. Now, as we know, the Democrat Party is the pro-crime party. Uh, It seems that most of their children are criminals. Is that uh, unfair to say? Because they're extremists and uh, radicals, right? I'm sorry, I'm just taking my lead from the Washington Post today. Uh, also, that happens to be statistically true, but but never mind the facts and the statistics. Let's not get all caught up in who killed who and all of that. Uh, but in Austin, Texas, um, which is a liberal hotbed in the middle of Texas, which means it's run by mental cases, and that crime is skyrocketing and things are getting worse and worse in Austin, Texas. My friend uh, Seton Motley, a writer, thinker, used to live in Austin, Texas, and he says he got out about 10 years ago because they lost their mind 10 years ago and that most of the normal people that he knows fled Austin, Texas long ago too. My, uh, my brother, uh, Daniel, used to live in Austin, Texas. He was a TV news reporter there. Now he's a TV news reporter in 
San Diego, California, which is German. And um, and uh, it was a great place. I visited them there, and it was a great It was many years ago, but it was a great place, a lot of fun. Chewies, you know, uh, fun places to go. Uh, Sixth Street, all that music. Well, now the Democrats have taken over. The left, you know, because the Democratic Party isn't. These people are the left, and they do what the left does everywhere in the world. And that means they, they commit crimes, mob violence becomes normal, looting, uh, attacks on police, uh, crime skyrockets. The police become the villains, and the criminals become the heroes. They're the left. It's, uh, and it is the Democrat Party in the mainstream, make no mistake. Now, uh, the New York Times is not covering it because they're not in the news business. They're in the Democrat Party business. They're part of the merger of state and corporate power. But here's the story from the Daily Mail out of the United Kingdom. Austin police blast, quote, miserable conditions and 911 callers put on hold as crime rates in Texas City soar after Black Lives Matter-inspired defund movement. That's a long headline, but that's the headline. Austin Police Association has revealed how the defund the police movement stripped police departments and how the workforce is declining through attrition. And nobody wants to join because they know that the Democrats will shoot them and then hang them because the Democrat Party is pro-crime and pro-criminal. See, now the story in the Daily Mail and not the Washington Post or the New York Times or even the Texas papers for that matter. An Austin police union has exposed the miserable, the word miserable is in quotation marks, miserable conditions faced by officers after the defund movement stripped departments and gutted the workforce. See, the Democrats cared very deeply about George Floyd, a career criminal who had fentanyl and methamphetamine, right, in his bloodstream, uh, and THC, which is mostly legal now. But methamphetamine, not, not as good for you as we had originally hoped, uh, and fentanyl. George Floyd's killing by a Minnesota cop and the resulting Black Lives Matter riots led to widespread demonization of police forces across the U.S. Austin PD's budget was hammered with a $150 million cut approved by the Democrat-run Texas City Council after its own scandal involving the shooting of an unarmed black man in 2020, just weeks after the Floyd death. There are, of course, many more unarmed white people shot by the police in the United States every year. There are, of course, many more white people, armed or unarmed, uh, shot by the police in the United States every year. Um, we should really have a riot, shouldn't we, Michael? Maybe, maybe a series of riots across the country to show our anger with uh, the because, you know, the Democrats, it seems to work for them. So the Austin Police Association told the Daily Mail that lasting impacts of the defund movement have ripped the ranks apart, driving officers to quit and making it increasingly difficult to recruit replacement staff. Since the Black Lives Matter protests, crime has soared with homicide rates booming. Homicide's kind of a little play on words there. Homicide rates are booming, as they are across the country and in Washington, D.C., and Chicago, and Baltimore, Los Angeles, because Democrats are on a murder spree. And, you know, if they had one single instance of some white guy wearing a MAGA hat walking in some place and looting the place or shooting it, it shooting somebody, it would be big news for weeks. It would be front-page news for weeks. That's how you know that hasn't happened. So since the Black Lives Matter protest, crime has soared, homicide rates booming in the city, ranked 15 out of 45 for the most homicide rates nationwide. A small, nice, it's the state capital, too, of Texas. While desperate 911 callers are being left on hold for up to a half an hour. Help, I'm being strangled. There is a, a gang of marauding invaders who sneaked across our open border. Thanks to Joe Biden, and they're choking my family to death. Uh, can you hold, please? All right. Now let's go to uh, the, 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 the head of the Austin Police Association that I just mentioned. Uh, Thomas Villarreal was on the Fox News Channel early this morning, and I was watching it for you. And he's talking about uh, the effects that the Democrats have had on, um, on crime. Now, I mean, the st statistics are that murder is up 30% in Austin, Texas. 
murder is up 30% compared to 2020. Um, aggravated assault is up 18%. That's when they had the George Floyd riots because St. George of Fentanyl was very important to them. You know how many uh, black people have been killed since George Floyd died <clears throat> while being arrested yet again? Uh, and by the way, they, one of the coroner reports said that if they had found him at home dead in bed, they would have determined that it was a fentanyl overdose. He had that much fentanyl in his system. And also he didn't die of choking. It was a heart-related uh, death. But never mind that. None of that matters. The officer is now in prison uh, and uh, because the Democrats lynch the police and they love the criminal. That's your dem- And then uh, thousands of police were injured, billions in property damage from coast to coast because the Democrats organized the riots. And you remember Kamala Harris was fighting to raise money for bail for all of the criminals, and then she was made uh, vice president of the United States. It's good to be a Democrat, isn't it? They're pro-crime, they're pro-criminal. So homicides in Austin are up 30% since the George Floyd riots, the catastrophe. Um, And uh, aggravated assaults up 18%. Auto thefts are up 77%. 77%. So they got that going for them down there. Um, Boy, oh boy. The uh, APA, uh, Austin Police Association President Thomas Villarreal, uh, said, uh, you know, the union has been shunned after more than two decades of negotiating contracts with the city. 2017, for the first time in their history, a proposed pay deal was voted down by the Democrats there because they're anti-police, because they're leftists. They're not liberals. Villarreal said that uh, this time the woke clamoring of defunding the police has started to emerge. He says, our officers worked without a contract for the first time in almost 20 years, the downward slide began in terms of both uh, officer staffing as well as morale, which means they don't police aggressively. Now, here is the head of the police association, the, the union in effect, and his name is Thomas Villarreal. We just have a backward slide. You know, we're, we're a growing city, um, a city that should be up around 2,000 officers and, and growing right now. And, you know, I've got about 1,475 officers in our police department. And, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're moving in the wrong direction. There's yeah. less, and less, less and less resources to go out and, and do the job. I've got detectives who are pulled away from their caseload to uh, just help answer 911 calls um, because we just don't have the resources to adequately police the city. Well, the Democrats made it that way on purpose because the Democrat Party is pro-crime and pro-criminal. They want more crime and more criminals, and they have power. So the result is, in Austin, Texas, they have more crime and more criminals. And if you're the police, you're the bad guy. And if you're the criminal, you're the hero of the story, because the Democrats are not on our side. Here is Thomas Villarreal. It's unfortunate for the citizens of Austin. Um, you know, it's, it's gotten so bad that we've put in some sworn personnel uh, over in 911 to help answer calls on an overtime basis. Listen to this. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, there's anecdotally, you know, on a, on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night when things are, are hopping, you know, it's not a, unusual for there to be multiple people put on hold for 8, 10, 12 or more minutes um, before you even get a 911 uh, call taker. Yeah. And then, you know, if it's that busy for the 911 call takers, then then it's, you know, with with limited resources working the mm-hmm. streets, it's, you know, at times hours before officers are getting to some calls, especially the lower priority ones. Hours, the lower priority ones, uh, especially the lower priority ones. Um, so you you call 911. You, you, you know, when's the last time you called 911? Have you ever called 911 in your life? Yeah? Okay. Um, and... Um, I guess I have for an accident or something. Uh, but uh, so you sit on hold for 8, 10, 12 minutes, and then they may get to you. And then it could take, he said, literally hours before the police get there because the Democrats have increased the number of crimes, reduced the number of police officers, reduced the number of 911 operators who are uh, dispatchers who are dispatching the police. Also, coincidentally, uh, over the weekend on Saturday in Washington, D.C., it was posted, put on hold by 911 for 15 minutes 
This is in Washington, D.C., which is a rolling gunfight most of the time because the Democrats saw a car with an elderly driver in downtown today surrounded and being harassed by a bunch of teens, probably 20 of them, on their bikes. They were banging on his bumper and doing wheelies around him. Not sure what led to the situation, but they basically blocked him and the cars behind him from passing. Looked like an unsafe situation. I called 911. I was literally on hold for 15 minutes. I mean, again, we've got mob, violent, criminal Democrats. Stop shooting people, Democrats. That would make the country a much better place. Let's have, uh, like, death takes a holiday, where the Democrat Party takes the day off from crime. How about that? You know, if you take the, what is it, the 12 or 15 top cities in the United States, biggest cities in the United States, and uh, take a map of the United States, circle those, say, 12, say 15 cities, the top most populated cities in the United States, take those, eliminate those from the crime statistics in the United States, and we are Scandinavia. I've done it myself with the statistics. But now we've got in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, you're on hold for, he says, 8, 10, 12 minutes can take hours for a police car to get to. The Democrats want to take away your Second Amendment rights. It's only the bad guys have guns and you don't. When you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. And the Democrats are the outlaws, so they're in favor of this. You know, the conservatives are, are pro-civilization. The left will uh, shoot you in the head and uh, step over you to steal your stuff. That's, uh, that's the left, and the left is here. And they are the Democrat Party. So banging on his, uh, d- on his car, doing wheelies, uh, and, uh, and uh, sat on hold for 15 minutes. Who, uh, this, this person called 911, sat on hold for 15 minutes before I could even speak to someone. The police came shortly after. The kids knew passers-by were trying to contact 911. Many of us were taking videos and asking them to back off. They cussed at us and looked like they didn't care. Lots of distressing things. This is downtown Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States of America. The Democrats did this to the country. It was not like this even five years ago. The Democrats have made this like a, you know, a work-free drug place where criminals roam the streets and good men die like dogs. So they sat there. They didn't care. Uh, A lot of distressing things about this whole episode, the writer said, but the fact that I was put on hold by 911 for 15 minutes really topped it all. Truly unacceptable. This is the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. This is Washington, D.C., where the president and the the Capitol and the Congress and the State Department, and, uh, and this is what the Democrat Party, make no mistake about it, have done to the city. You know, uh, the day that Donald Trump was inaugurated, I was down there. My best girl and I were down there. The Democrats were rioting and looting and burning cars. And you remember the limousine they burned of the nice immigrant man who was trying to make a living as a uh, chauffeur. And the Democrats burned his livelihood. And uh, was anybody ever arrested for that? I believe that no one was ever arrested. Nobody faced any church. The FBI is going to Alaska and breaking down doors in pre-dawn raids to arrest, w- arrest women that were on Capitol Hill January 6th that didn't even go inside the Capitol. Uh, Sig Heil. And uh, yet, who uh, went to jail for torching the Church of the Presidents across from the White House? The answer is nobody. All charges were dropped. Because the Democrats are pro-criminal and pro-crime. Maybe Joe Biden should come out and ask the Democrat Party to, you know, uh, uh, death takes a holiday moment for America. Joe Biden should come out and ask Democrats to just for 24 hours not shoot anybody. Did you see what Chicago did? Chicago is calling for the Democrats to not shoot anybody. What is it, Michael, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m.? What, then at 9 p.m., uh, like a, a, a tornado siren goes off and the Democrats can open fire? And it sounds like the opening of Saving Private Ryan? That's your Democrat Party. Vote accordingly. We're at 888-630-9625. I've got uh, some audio for you today of the radical extremist Democrat governor of Minnesota 
where last night in Minneapolis, um, there was a mass shooting there. Uh, left eight people wounded. Eight people wounded in Minneapolis. Minneapolis, Mary Tyler Moore show last night, right? Because Democrats shoot a lot of people. And uh, anybody aware of who's sounding the alarm on this across the country? The answer is no one. Who's in charge of the peace talks for Ukraine under Joe Biden, Mr. Foreign Policy? The answer is no one. There is not a Democrat in the country sounding the alarm about the killings and the shootings disproportionately impacting people of color. And if a Republican sounds the alarm, the Democrats shout them down as racists, which means more killings and more shootings because Democrats. All right, let's go to the uh, telephones, Michael. Also in Chicago, they've asked the gangs not to shoot anybody until 9 p.m. I'm serious. This is a new pride. mentioned it last week. This is a new program in Chicago asking the gangs to not shoot anybody until 9 p.m. 9 p.m., the, the tornado siren goes off, and then they open fire, and uh, everybody shoot. Okay, ready, set, shoot at 9 p.m. for whom the bell tolls. Let's go to uh, Mike calling from Gainesville, Virginia. Mike, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Well, happy Monday, Chris Plant. Why, thank you very kindly, and happy Monday to you. Uh, thank you. I, I- I was just thinking, you know, if we have a shortage of people to be on the police course in Washington, D.C., and we can't staff the 911 call centers, perhaps the first place we should cut back is on this uh, personal security for Muriel Bowser. How many people does she have guarding her constantly? Uh, Can we free them up to do other work? Well, that's a very good suggestion. And and I don't know how many, but I'm sure an overabundance of people because uh, they've made it a very dangerous city and they need a lot of security. Just like the Congress, they have armed security around them all the time. And and all these Democrats that defund the police usually have big, strong men, uh, cisgender, heterosexual men with guns surrounding them who will shoot people uh, if need be. But the Democrats would uh, strip you of your Second Amendment rights, take away your guns, and take the police away and, of course, uh, the ability of the police to respond. I remember Mike in Chicago, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, baby Groot, uh, no longer there, thankfully. The new guy may be worse. She had essentially a whole precinct of police officers on her security detail. It became a running joke. They shut down entire city blocks when she was there. They, they lived in multiple vehicles outside of her home. Uh, she traveled with a phalanx of security officers like she's Saddam Hussein. And, uh, and that was considered to be fine because Democrats in the media don't hold their feet to the fire. 